In this tutorial, we'll see how WOW Frequency Equalizer can be used in different settings, suggesting also how apparently strange results can be exploited. The first picture we're going to examine is that of a young girl in the woods. It would be a good idea to have a smoother skin in this picture. Duplicate layer, then let's try to apply the WOW preset. There is undoubtedly a result but not what I have in mind. I would like the color variation to be smoother and also I don't like the effect on the eyes very much. I then move to the skin preset, whose name sounds promising, and the result I obtain is this. Apparently it isn't a very good result because the overall look of the photograph is blurry. The eyes and hair in particular seem too soft. One would be easily tempted to trash this result, but I think a closer look at the skin may show something. Rather than looking at the skin, let's try to avoid to look at the rest and evaluate the skin only. If we blind ourselves to whatever is not skin, the result is good. We therefore need to keep this version in the skin and the original elsewhere, especially in the eyes which can be obtained by means of a layer mask. The easiest way to make a proper mask in this case is probably hidden in the color range command hidden in the select menu. This command has an automated function which allows to recognize skin tones in a picture and there is some artificial intelligence which helps us to detect a face. So another shape which may fall in that chromatic range is likely to be excluded by the selection. We only have one cursor named fuzziness to refine the selection and in general we want to have white in the skin and black or anyway gray anywhere else. This leads us looking for a compromise. I think this is just fine and so we click OK and the command gives us an active selection as you can see. A click on the Add Layer Mask icon will create a layer mask which blends the two layers. Let's Alt Option click the mask and see. Where the mask is white, the layer is visible. Where the mask is black, the layer is transparent and the original shows through. Any grey area in the mask makes the layer more or less transparent according to its density. Let's go back. As you can see, the mask gives us a smoother skin, but other parts are retained from the original. Let's have a closer look. This is before, this is after. We may refine the mask by hand or use one of the powerful functions available in Photoshop, but at this stage this will suffice. In this second example we'll expand on the technique we just used, but we'll also add an additional WOW layer. The skin preset seems to work with the same possible objection we saw in the previous example, the image is too blurry, but also the WOW preset yields good results. Let's apply the skin preset first and then tame the result with a layer mask built exactly as we just did. I think this needs a bit more fuzziness click OK, create layer mask, and there we go. Only the skin, or almost only the skin, is affected by the plugin. I am satisfied, but I would like to apply the WOW preset to this version, so I'll make new composite layer. We just have to use Merge Visible from the Layers menu while keeping the ALT option key pressed. So, this is our new layer, and here we can apply the WOW preset. This is before and this is after. While I like the soft look in this picture, I would also love to have fine detail where needed, so I'll just boost the high frequency slider to the maximum. I'm not afraid to enhance skin problems here because they were taken care for by the skin preset. There is a bit too much detail here in the eyelashes but we already have a mask that works well in those areas. We just need to Alt Option drag the mask onto 
the new layer, and this is the final result. So, this is the original. This is the skin preset with the mask we created. And this is the wow preset applied to the previous image, always through a layer mask. I think it's a good result to obtain in less than one minute. In this third example, we have a picture of a senior guy. A face like this has different demands than a model's, so I would like to try something different and use WOW more creatively than correctively. Let's see what happens with the announced black control preset. Some parts of the resulting picture are very interesting, the hair, for example, and the skin takes up a painterly quality which turns the photograph into something like a cartoon, which I quite like in this case. There are parts that do not work at all, though. The eyes almost disappear, and the shadows are strongly enhanced. This could work in some cases, but it's not at all what we want in others, like under the nose and around the eyebrows. This picture seems to need what we call a luminosity mask, that is, a layer mask that selects areas on the basis of their luminosity rather than geometry. There are several ways to do this in Photoshop, but they are rather complex and offer little control on the mask. One possibility is to use our Mask Equalizer plugin. This plugin is totally independent from WOW, but it really shines when they are used together. Its usage will be described in dedicated tutorials, but here's a quick demonstration of its capabilities. First, I need to launch the plugin from the usual extensions menu. There are four main buttons located in the upper part of the user interface Shadows, Midtones, Highlights, Shadows and Highlights. Normally, the mask is shown, but we're not too interested in it now. We then use the Comp button instead to inspect the result. With the Shadows preset, the darker parts of the picture are masked, showing the original on the layer below and the lighter parts remain untouched. So, our elaboration changes from this version to this version. Midtones allows shadows and highlights to show through, but blocks, you guessed it, the midtones. This is not very interesting to us, I think. Highlights restricts the action of the mask to whatever is not too light. Shadows and Highlights is basically the opposite of midtones, keeping an eye on the highlights and the shadows as well. This is before and this is after. We want to message the shadows a bit, so either Shadows or Shadows Highlights is a good choice. I personally prefer the latter because it keeps the light spots on the skin from becoming too bright, but it's really a matter of taste. At this point you could manipulate the mask in several ways if you need it, but I'll leave it alone. Further uses and characteristics of this plugin will be discussed in the dedicated tutorials. Here it is. This is for now the end of the WOW tutorials. We've seen three examples using techniques a bit more advanced than simply applying a preset, and I hope you enjoyed them. Follow me in other tutorials if you wish.